We're going to try this again. We're not going to give up until it works. When we see stuff like this, then we know the message is worth sharing. So you're going to share. Who are you sharing this with, everyone? You are sharing this. If you share the awful, tragic video of George Floyd's death, you need to be sharing this. If you shared any of the footage, any of the media coverage about the riots, you need to be sharing this. We cannot be spreaders of party equation. We have got to be at a point now where we're deciding that we lift our voices in answer to the solution. So this is it. This is our moment, Miss. This is our moment. If you haven't figured that out yet, this is the moment. So who am I? I am the lady that <laughs> the right and the left and the media want to make sure you never hear about because they know if you hear me out, then the game is over. But tell me, how many of you are ready for the games to be over? You're ready for the political games to start. You're ready for true resolution and restoration to begin. If that's you, let me know. I know that I'm not just talking to myself. I know that I'm not the only one who wants this. Uh, we want to make sure that the word gets out. The word has to be the truth, right? So you're going to share this if you know people who are wanting to hear something different. I've listened to the president's speech. I've listened to Vice President Joe Biden's speech, and I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard them tell us all the stuff we don't want to hear but need to hear now. I haven't heard them paint the picture of what we can be into the future. And that's what we're going to be painting tonight. So I want you to share, share, share in abundance because we have to be about the business of now moving from rioting to restoration. So I haven't been the story that people have wanted to tell, that the media has wanted to tell because they know that I'm going to tell you the truth. And you know that you know what they say about the truth. They say two things about the truth. The truth hurts and the truth will set us free. So we're gonna do both of those things tonight. My heart's desire is to set us all free. I wanna set myself free of the outrage. I wanna set myself free of the suspicion, of the doubt. But if we're truly gonna be free, we must first feel this pain, the pain of this moment for real. So share this widely so that we have no excuse now about not having a vision about where we can go. Share this wide and share this far. My prayer is that we don't resist the, re the reset. There's a reset where, and we resisted it where COVID-19 was concerned. We wanted to reopen, right? So we reopened to the same disparities. We reopened to the same injustices, to the same lack of leadership. We reopened to the same anger. We're reopening all the same wounds that hadn't healed yet, hadn't been diagnosed, hadn't been looked, looked at yet. And we reopen now to the same pain, the same anger, the same hurt and the same death. I believe that God is working over time to get our attention. Why do I speak openly about my faith? Why do I speak openly about God when they say that's supposed to be political suicide? That's because I'm not doing this to be in politics. The reason I speak openly about my faith is because I don't like the way that my faith has been represented to date. I don't like the way that the scripture I hold so dear has been manipulated to date. I don't like the way that religion has been taken out of context. So I speak openly so that you can see there is another way to be a faith-based leader. There is another way that doesn't mean my goal is to rule over you with my faith, but that I'm able to love you through our differences, serve you through our differences, protect you even if you believe differently than me. It is a mandate for me to be open and clear about this so that you know what the contrast is. But I believe that God is working now over time to get our attention and I come to you with no fear. But I do have one concern. And that concern is that we might miss this moment. We might misunderstand what these times really are. And I'm concerned about that because I believe that brewing underneath 
the surface of the riots that we can't see is actually rage that we can't see. You see what I'm saying? I believe that brewing beneath the surface of the inflammation we've turned our eyes to look at, the looting that is disgusting us, right? The violence that we see as being unnecessary, brewing underneath all the stuff we can see is the rage that we cannot. I have concerns that we might be stoking the rage of future willing martyrs who are saying enough is enough on both sides. People that are now ready for a new civil war. That's the rage, that's the edge that I believe we're standing on the peak of. I think this is the moment we can't afford to miss because we've got to step back from that edge. There are people now, there are your Dylan Roofs who are thinking it's his job to take it from here. There are Nat Turners who are thinking it's his job to take it from here. So if we want to see something different come out of what this looks like right now, which looks very familiar, then we're going to have to understand where we really are. And I want to take a second to explain what we're seeing in all of the unrest. I know I made a video about it, but some of you may not have seen it. And I think we can't have resolution until we have clarity. You can't have clarity until you have an understanding of what you're seeing. And you must look at it, even if it's disturbing to see. We're seeing now a disturbing, a painful symbolism. You're seeing violence projected in response to violence received. You're seeing lawlessness in response to the abuse of law and order. You're seeing death and destruction in response to death and destruction. You're going to keep on seeing businesses that don't deserve to suffer. You're gonna keep seeing that as long as you keep seeing people killed who didn't deserve to die. Am I justifying the rioting and the looting? But we cannot move forward if you don't understand the pain, if you misinterpret the pain that you're seeing. Some of us are saying, these are crazy people, they're acting like animals. I say what you're seeing is a response to being treated like animals, being classified as such. So let me just stop right here and say, <clears throat> if you want this to be a person egging on war, this isn't the rally. This isn't the rally for you. If you want this to be a person in denial of what's happening right now, this isn't the rally for you. If you want this to be about revenge and retaliation, this isn't the spot. But if you are people who are set on restoration, who are set on not pretending like where we are isn't where we are, but you really want to understand it and you want to be a part of the solution, this is the place for you tonight. There's something else we're seeing that I think is beautiful and it's hopeful. I want us to be in recognition of it. We are seeing people from every color, every creed unite against this cancer called racism. We're seeing the oppressed. Remember, I said this had to happen. We're seeing the oppressed link arms with people who look like the oppressors, but they don't have the same heart of darkness. We're seeing people thousands and thousands of miles away around the world who did not need to dive into this situation with us, but they're doing it anyway. God is doing a new thing. We have to be able to perceive it right now. There's a desperate call. This is the good news. There's a desperate call right now to birth something new. You women out there know who can't get around the pain of birthing. We're in the throes of the birthing process. You're hearing the wails and the groans and the screams. You're seeing people who want desperately not to be, they want to be anywhere but here right now, feeling this pain as we push this thing out. But this is not the time to load up on anesthesia, to look for an emotional epidural that we can take, to wish for yesteryear, to pretend that doing anything that we've already done is going to give us more than anything than we've already had. We know that definition is insanity. But if we push, if we keep pushing through this moment right here, we get to birth a beautiful thing together, 
a beautiful thing if we push. But if we stop right now, if we stop at the riots, if we pretend like we've gone back to normal when the streets clear, if we focus now only on the looting, if we settle here at politics as usual, we miscarry the mission. We miscarry it. But we can't be about the mission unless we're about the business of understanding the truth of our assignment. So I told you we were going to get to the truth. The truth hurts, but the truth also sets us free. So I'm going to give you four hard truths that we cannot move past this if we don't accept. Hard truth number one, no one is exempt. You saw me post a scripture from uh, Lamentations 5, 5. It says, the pursuers are at our necks. We are weary. There is no rest for us. But this is the time we have to ask ourselves, who is us? I'll give you the answer. It is all of us. Sidebar. If you want to hear me say that all lives matter without hearing me say that all lives can't matter until all lives matter, it's going to be hard to hear this next part. But don't leave because it's hard. If you want me to say that this is only about one demographic or two demographic, it's going to be hard to listen through this. But we must listen here. We must not waste time taking offense. We must take note. And we take note of all the things we thought we understood, all the things we thought we knew, and we come together and decide to learn something new now so we can do something new next. This is about all of us. We can't dare think that this is only about the black neck being oppressed. For while the black head has been the one under the knee in this last, most recent tragic story, make no mistake, this burden of racism is bearing down on all of us in this moment. It's bearing down on the neck of Christians who are having to remember they are their brother's keeper, even if their brother has a different skin color. It's bearing down on the neck of the white community who's realizing the weight of this unearned immunity in this season. It's bearing down on the necks of all of the other shades, races, ethnicities, who have to be wondering right about now if this would be their neck if it weren't for the buffer of the black man. If you don't believe me, you ask the Asian Americans who suffered at the height of COVID-19 from discrimination. You ask the Arab American who suffered after 9-11 from profiling. You ask the transgender woman right now. You ask the Jew who the scripture I quoted was originally about in the first place. There will always be a new neck to stand on. We have to be serious about there being fresh justice now. There will be no rest until we all deal with the unrest caused by systemic racism. That was hard truth number one, that it's about all of us hard truth number two. This moment is not a distraction. We don't get to close our eyes and wait until somebody wakes us up from this nightmare. This is the thing. This is the thing. It's not a distraction. Some will say this is a distraction from reviving the economy. We're losing our focus. We should be reviving the economy. You can't talk about reviving the economy until you talk about creating a more humane economy that works for everyone and doesn't keep allowing the same people to win and the same people to lose. Some are gonna say this is a distraction from the election. You can't talk about the election until you talk about who's deciding what your choices are. You all keep hitting me up, Jade, why aren't you on the news? Why don't we see you everywhere? It's not because the media doesn't know we exist. It's because this isn't the story they want you to have. Neither party wants there to be another option because they lose their grip on power. You can't talk about jobs until you talk about the original plot, a real living, breathing plot created at the time by Southern Democrats. And that plot was to exclude blacks, poor people, immigrants from receiving unemployment. 
We have to talk about that first. You can't recover from COVID until you understand why minorities were dying in the largest numbers. You can't deal with any of it properly until you deal with systemic racism finally. But here is the hardest truth. This is the third truth. I woke up this morning with a burning sense that we've been diagnosing the wrong problem. We can't address the issue of systemic racism until we address the other systemic issue. We have a systemic heart issue in this nation. We have a systemic heart issue in this world. The issue is not just with our skin, it's with our hearts. This is a heart attack we are having, America. We have to pay attention. Why is the whole world now suddenly rising up with us now in this moment? Why was George Floyd the tipping point when he's technically, and I say this not callously, but it is the truth, he's technically and unfortunately nothing new. The world is waking up because they are realizing something. Something was different this time as we looked into the eyes of Derek Chauvin. We didn't just see a man that we think was racist, is racist. We saw a heartless man. We saw a heartless man deaf to the pleas for life by a helpless man. That's a heart problem in his heart. Beneath his neck, he saw a man that was less than him, that was lesser than he. He saw a man beneath him that was undeserving of life, that was undeserving of making it to trial, and that was undeserving of even a glorified, a dignified death at the end of a long life. What we must face now is that we have systemic heart failure in our nation. Our nation uh, can see the traces of this issue since the beginning. We've had this issue. It began when we saw land as being more valuable than the Native Americans that inhabited it. It continued when we saw cotton as having more valuable, uh, being more valuable than the people who picked it. It continues when our families, we see them as more valuable than the ones that work our fields, mow our lawns, clean our homes. We see our trash as more valuable than the men and women who pick it up. It's only then when we are able to devalue human life so easily over a long period of time, it's only then that when we put a value of lesser on human life that we can so easily slaughter, that we can so easily disregard, that we can so easily mock Racism is real. You're not going to hear me say anything other than that. But what I'm telling you now is it's the part of the heart issue we must deal with now because it's the part of the heart issue that has persisted the longest. But race, this is the hard truth. Race is the icing on the cake. It's only the external excuse we use to cover up our real internal flaw. Because you see, once we put this episode to bed, it'll be religion. That'll be the excuse we use to oppress. It'll be citizenship. That'll be the excuse we use to oppress. It'll be patriotism. Do you have enough of it? It'll be socioeconomic status. Those things will always be our external cover-ups, the ways that we justify our bad (laughs) behavior, excuse me, towards one another if we don't deal with the heart issue. So what we must fix first, or we will be fighting until the death, literally, we must fix our sick hearts. It's a heart issue that causes right now on social media, young white boys and girls to post pictures of themselves doing the George Floyd challenge with their white knees on white necks of their friends, mocking this moment. That's a heart issue. That's a heart issue. It's a heart issue that causes us to demand justice for tortured dogs, but causes us to cheer at the possibility of releasing vicious dogs to torture humans demanding justice. What's the final hard truth? And then we have to be about the business of getting free. 
Hard truth number four is the hypocrisy within the heart issue. We can't be telling white people that white silence is violence. And then we speak, when they speak up, we tell them, shut up, you're not the savior. We can't be telling people, you can't tell me how to express my pain. And then telling people, let me tell you how to express your support. You can't be telling people, you know nothing about my suffering, but then we tell another people group their suffering couldn't possibly be as bad. Here's the truth. You can't beat the black experience in terms of suffering in this country. It's got a long history. It's got a lot of different chapters. It is written in blood in the soil of our country. But why are we battling with other groups that have suffered instead of joining forces? There's another hypocrisy. It's the hypocrisy we hear now of all these voices that are saying, where are all our leaders? Why haven't they risen to the occasion? Have we considered the fact that they may have already died at our hands? Have we lost a Gandhi at the hands of a crooked cop? Have we lost a future president who died in his own neighborhood at the hands of someone who looks just like him? Have we left another Martin Luther King Jr. dead in the water at the border? Has a Mother Teresa, a cure for COVID-19, a voice of reason, that could have helped us avoid this season, been left to never see life on the other side of the womb. We have blood on our hands, bloody hearts that we must wash right now. And yes, the current dominant stain on our soul, the current pressing issue facing us in this moment is racism. It is the one that won't come off. It's the bloody stain that won't come off no matter how much we try to wash the outside of the bowl, right? Uh, with, with feel good talk and policy promises. I'm telling you, it's time now for the inner work that only we can do. So can I tell you now how this truth, <laughs> these hard truths can set us free. You understand if we don't understand the things that I just said, we're pretending as we move forward. So let's talk about how we get free. <clears throat> Number one, we have to own this moment. America, this is not any politician's moment. That's coming to you from the independent presidential candidate. This is not my moment. Our savior is not in Washington. He or she is not on their way to Washington. We as individuals, we as people groups, we as organizations, we must repent, turn in the other direction. That's all that means. Don't let your pride be stirred up by that word repent. We've all done wrong. We've all done something wrong. Let's wash our hands of it and be about our business of moving in a new direction. Let's move away from the violence before we kill all of the soldiers we need. Let's move away from the blame before we shame all of the allies into being invisible. Let's move away from the burning of buildings before we burn down the thing we're supposed to be building together. We risk missing this moment. Don't you dare give this moment away, not to the president of the United States who has already weaponized this to spark fear instead of understanding, don't you dare let this be about Vice President Joe Biden's comeback. Make this about us not needing to wait around until November to change things. Though you better believe if you want to have your voices heard in the walls of Washington, if you want to see prosecutors that you know are lopsided out, if you want to see mayors and governors that you know are lopsided go, then you better be in the polls. But number two, here's how we get free. We stop playing semantics. Do all lives matter? Yes, they should. But you can't say all lives matter until all lives matter, and then all lives will actually matter. Saying black lives matter doesn't mean you don't believe blue lives matter. We wouldn't have to say blue lives matter if we thought that all blue believed all lives matter. Do you see how it works there? Stop fighting over the semantics. We tie ourselves up, we lose breath, we lose energy, we lose focus. 
Number three, you want to get free? Welcome everyone to the front lines. You can't be mad when somebody says we ain't black when we tell other people you ain't sorry if you didn't black out, if you didn't march, if you didn't speak up on the last killing. Stop finding reasons to whittle down the forces. And you should be focused on tearing down the real systems that have held us back. My children are watching. So I promise you what you hear in my voice is a passion for the purpose of this nation. I believe our identity is to be mavericks in this season. It is to be rebellious against evil. It is not to be torn to shreds by division in this country. My children are listening. I want them to see what passion looks like. I want them to know the difference between anger without direction and passion with a cause. Hear me well, number four, America, if we want to get free, we're in the middle of a reckoning right now. Don't wish that away. But there's not going to be any rest. Those of us who just want to move past this, we just want to get back to normal. How dare we want to go back to something that wasn't working? There will be no rest until there's restoration. There will be no restoration until there's reconciliation. There will be no reconciliation until there's resolution. There will be no resolution until there is a new American revolution. That's the only way you get to a new American dream. But first you have to get on the side of the current American nightmare that we're living in right now. Never fear America. I know there have been political candidates who tried to weaponize that word, but you listen to me, revolution is in the blood of this country. We didn't have a problem with it with George Washington. We didn't have a problem with it when we came over here in the first place. We didn't have a problem with it with the Boston Tea Party. Let's not have a problem with revolution now. Let's just understand this. It's not a revolution that's meant to be bloody. This is the good news and the bad news. Lucky for us, those of us still amongst the living, the blood has already been shed. George Floyd is the latest martyr, but before him were too many sacrificial lambs to list. They have already been slain on the altar of injustice for centuries. The only thing <laughs> that we have to focus on making sure it dies right now is we have to see to the death of old systems that have on purpose held different people groups down, have intentionally held black people down. We have to say goodbye forever to racist institutions. We have to let go of prejudicial pacts that we've made and biased bureaucracies. But here's the thing. The burning of buildings, that's not our revolution. The fire in our heart is our revolution. The breaking of glass windows is not our revolution. The breaking of glass ceilings is our revolution. The spray painting on whitewashed walls is not our revolution. The rewriting of whitewashed laws is the revolution. So what does justice look like? Listen, I've been listening to the proposals and the policies we'll release some of our own in very specific detail. But let me tell you here, outlawing chokeholds will mean nothing if we still have officers who have a heart issue. People who have a heart issue, who hatred has a hold of their heart, will always find another way to kill. The way we now select our officers, the way we screen their minds, their histories, their experiences and their hearts must be updated. There's an incredible system in Idaho, the way that they screen their officers there. I mean, they look and they dig for everything because they want to know. Links to hatred now must be taken seriously and they must come with consequence. Guess what? We don't just owe this to civilians. We don't just owe this to George Floyd. We owe it to our good law enforcement officials who do put on that badge with every intent to preserve life. We owe it to them. I don't want us to wonder if the four cops that were watching all of this unfold, the other cops that were with Mr. Chauvin, I don't wanna to have to wonder if what I was seeing was an extension of his racism or were they really wondering if, if they went against this man, their leader, who already had 14 plus offenses, 
without any consequences? Were they also having to wonder if I step in here and I stop what I know is wrong, does that mean that I will get no help from myself, from my own brothers in blue on my next watch? I'm not excusing them at all. I'm glad to see charges have been upgraded because there's no other job in this country that we can go to and kill someone wrongly and simply be fired or relocated. But we have got to shake up the misplaced loyalty codes that exist now in our law enforcement system, but in many of our institutions, we have got to shake up the good, the good old boys clubs. We've got to also reward the cops with clean records and severely punish those found to violate the civil rights of people in their custody. Media, can I see the good cops in my community doing the good thing? Can I see the good cops who are standing up for what is right? Can we embrace them even in this moment? Can you show us that? Or is it only enough for you to stoke our anger? A Department of Justice under my administration will serve as the nation's watchdog for hate crime, especially for the states with no hate crime legislation on record. We need to do now a, re a retroactive sweep. I'm not satisfied with starting from today because it must be our duty to look for every way we can serve justice. So we now need a retroactive sweep now, looking for bad apples that have gone long enough. The other Derek Chauvins who have 14 offenses, we need to go back now. Justice must be served even if it's long overdue. I'd rather have cold justice than no justice at all. If you wanna see an end to the rioting, and I know all of us do, to some degree, but if you wanna see an end to the rioting, the people rioting will have to believe there is an end to the injustices in sight. I wanna pivot a moment here because <clears throat> I could simply just list out policy related to this moment, but I think we would miss the point. You want the rage to subside if you want the healing to begin then that systemic heart issue, which created the systemic racism issue that we're focused on right now, must be addressed in the way our economics are set up. Not just healthy for some. The economy just can't be healthy for some. It has to be humane for everyone. You can't have billion dollar companies that have built their American dreams on the backs of their American workers. And yet they still, while making billions of dollars, have people on their rosters living below the poverty line. That's a heart issue. Companies now have to have a new heart. They have to have a heart transplant in this season for us to see this change. This systemic issue, which created the systemic racism issue must be addressed in the way our education is set up. We can't value test scores more than we value the kids taking the test and more than we value the teachers having to teach to the test. You wanna see less stress. You wanna see less outrage, then help the teacher who is teaching in the underserved communities. Pay her more since she's already doing way more than the work she signed on for. The systemic heart issue which created the systemic racism issue must be addressed in the way our criminal justice system is set up. You can't legalize marijuana, give a loan to a white person to set up shop and profit from it, and then keep a black man locked up for the very thing that he sold that is now legal. Then you let him out with a record which prevents him from getting a good job and then he turns to real crime and ends up back in the system and we act surprised. That's a hard issue. We have to actually want to see people reform. We have to actually want to see them succeed. If not, we'll all be back in the streets once again. Is this a war now of civilians against police, black against white, educated versus uneducated, brown against yellow, rich against poor, urban against rural? Only if we want it to be. We have to remember that we're not warring with flesh and blood here. The enemy is real and he's here. It is evil. His current costume for the moment is racism. The players he's chosen to play it out on are black and white, but his goal, Evil's goal, the enemy's goal, is the same. He comes but to steal 
our belief in the future to kill us and our dreams and to destroy all of our possibilities and all of our opportunities on both sides. You better believe evil has no pony in the race. If the enemy in this season has his way, what we will see is that we have been doing his dirty work for him. Do not let it be that easy. This is our moment, America, to rise, to arise and shine together out of the gross darkness that is covering the earth. The darker it gets, though, the brighter we get to shine. This is a choose ye this day moment, America. We're not choosing between a man or a woman. We're choosing the right path. This is a, for such a time as this moment, and we get to decide what time it is. This is the new thing, can we perceive it? Or will we go down blinded by our rage, blinded by denial, blinded by false loyalties to two political parties that are determined to stay in opposition at all costs, even if it costs us, which is what it's doing right now. We will go down blind, to political ploys to take the sacredness of this moment and distort it as meaningless anarchy. And that way we won't have to face the hard fight for unity ahead. There was a time for rioting. We know um, even in the word of God, it says there's a, a time and a season for everything, for everything under the sun. So if there was a time for rioting, then there must be a time for restoration. So what do we do right now? Here's a warning. Protesters, the president has plans for you, plans to make good TV out of you, to put you in your place. I believe, unfortunately, that our current leader will use the, his dismissed and ironic calls for law and order to weaponize a part of his base that has been taught to be fearful of the calls for justice, to misinterpret these cries as anarchy without a cause, to see the rise of those being oppressed as equaling the overthrow of life as they know it. Let us all on both sides not play so easily into a re-election playbook. Don't give any man the opportunity to make a show out of this moment. Everyone who is feeling damaged right now, hurt right now, hopeless right now, don't let this be about any side trying to regain power, you better make sure the power that is being regained is to be given to you. I want us all owning proudly the power of who we are. I want you to be proud to be black, proud to be white, Indian, Asian, Hispanic, you name it. I want us making no apologies for the colors of our skin. I do want us seeing color more boldly. Don't go around saying you don't see color. We're supposed to see color. We're supposed to see the beauty in the difference of the shades. We're supposed to understand the beauty in the differences of the stories that come with those colors. We're supposed to understand the difference in the struggles that comes with those colors. This isn't a time to be colorblind. It's the time for ownership of the multicolored tapestry that is the thing that actually makes America great. Here's what we're going to do. Sidebar looters, get out of the way. Grown people are trying to have a movement here. We're trying to have a moment. You're, you're the distraction. The moment is, is real. I think we should be considering now vanishing from the streets. Why? Not out of fear, but because it is now time to turn and rally to come to reason. It's time to come reason together to decide next steps to decide next steps. We've gotten the attention of the world. When I say we, who am I talking about? If you were paying attention, I'm not talking about we as in black people. I'm talking about we as in all the humans, the world over who have decided enough is enough. This is the time that we're all standing with each other side by side. I said, let there be a holy hush right now over these cities. Let there be a powerful silence that's as eerie as the violence that preceded it. Everybody's telling you to register to vote. And I know we roll our eyes at that, but listen, you better be registered. This is only the beginning of some of the upheaval that we're going to be seeing. Our very voices are in the balance right now. Register to vote en masse. Start tomorrow morning. You better grab your 18 year old son and your 100 year old <laughs> great grandmother 
and get them registered. <clears throat> Make sure they're in position to help us turn the tide. We need to send a collective signal that first of all, you're not deciding these outcomes for us. That we are taking ownership responsibility for all our choices. We demand to know all of our options. We have to signal a seismic shift here. You're right though, your vote hasn't always counted. Sometimes your vote has been suppressed, it's been tampered with, it's been unaccounted for, it's been pressed down, shaken together, run over, and even entitled to. You're right, your voice hasn't always been heard, even though it was supposedly being uplifted. You're right, your options have been limited on purpose, intentionally designed to have you align hopelessly, helplessly, unhappily with one side or the other. People ask me, Jade, why are you daring to run right now? It's too risky. The times are too crucial. I'm running now because the times are crucial. It's too risky for us to do politics as usual. We need someone in office now who has lived many levels of the American experience. This is our moment, America. We are in the midst of a new thing. I don't think it's a red thing. I don't think it's a blue thing. I think we get to create it. It's brand spanking new. All things are made new. And I believe that begins with you. It begins with us as individuals. In this season now, I'll end by saying, this is the moment that we have to now envision what a new American dream looks like. We have to decide we are on the side of a new American revolution that's not about bloodshed, but it is about justice for the blood that has come before us. And it is about renewal and rejuvenation and refreshing and reconciliation and resolution. And then it can be about restoration. We can't restore the things we haven't looked at plainly. We can't restore the things we are still in denial about. We have to call a thing what it is. And lastly, I declare right now that your voice will be heard that those of you who have been feeling stilted, you haven't known how to share, how to express your support, we declare your release from the fear of doing something wrong. Speak out, show your love however you see fit. We know it's not about you, that you're not trying to make it about you, but we just ask you to share. We want the front lines of this new American call to action to be as broad, as wide, as colorful, as diverse as possible. We want people from every side. Those of you who feel like your faith has been hijacked and you're looking for um, something that reconciles with what you actually believe, be a part of a new American revolution that says you don't get to hijack my faith and tell me what my beliefs mean, that you know you are called to serve your brother no matter his or her skin color. Those of you who are tired of being on a side that doesn't represent where you stand, don't stay there out of fear. If we're only voting for something that we can't stand, if we're just trying to get something out, that's not really voting for something. You're just voting against something. This is a season where we need to take the time. Don't let anybody rush you out of this moment. You've got plenty of time. We watched Republicans and Democrats work together <laughs> and in a week pass a stimulus bill. All things are possible. You've got plenty of time to stand back, demand more options and weigh them. You've got plenty of time to check and see if whoever you're standing behind so hard is also standing behind you. You've got plenty of time to make sure that whoever you're backing so loudly actually has your back. And I declare now that your voice is going to be heard, your vote will be counted, your solutions will be seen, your skin will be valued for its beauty, your story will too, uh, your life will be spared, your children will be safe. Those of you who have been in fear, crying over your children, rejoice over them instead. Declare now that they will have long life, that their life will not be taken from them a second before their appointed number of days, they will live a long life with mercy and goodness by their side. And we thank God right now that your children will not only be saved, but you will be protected in this season. Your dignity will be protected. Your prosperity will be expanded in this season. You and your family and your children and your children's children and your children's children, children, and a thousand generations more will be called blessed. And that's just if I have something to say about it. So you know 
since that's a blessing from God himself, it can be a done deal if we receive it in this season. So we lift up right now a change in guard that has nothing to do with politics. We lift up right now a change in season that has nothing to do with November. We lift up right now a change in atmosphere that has nothing to do with whether or not we're marching in the streets or quiet in our homes, that this is a change that's real. It's a revolution that is necessary. It's a course correction that's long overdue. So I thank you for listening <coughs> and I thank you for sharing. But most importantly, I thank you for believing in the possibility of something new. If this sounds like a movement of restoration that you want to lend your wind to, lend your breath to, lend your focus and your energy to, we would love to have you operate in purpose alongside us. We have declared that we will see victory every single day. We don't have to wait on November to serve you. We don't have to wait on November to protect you. We can right now do everything we can to serve the American people. If you're ready for a new season, you're ready to stop hiding behind party lines, you're ready to stop dabbling in false loyalties, you're ready to stop worshiping man or woman, and you're ready to say, listen, a new thing is being done, I wanna be a part of it, you're gonna text RESTORE to 33777. And we'll be so happy to have you join our ranks. In the meantime, let people know that this movement exists. Let us not be subject to the stories that everybody else wants to tell. Let us make sure that our stories are told, that the stories we want to see are in front of our eyes, that the options we want to see are on our ballots. I hope that this has blessed you. Um, I will engage with you and interact with you. I can't wait to see all of your comments, but let me tell you, this is your moment. Don't let anyone take it from you. Thank you so much, America. Have a blessed night.